everybody to our closing ceremony for the Science Institute. We are excited that you've been able to join us for this week um, for our 2020 Science Institute program. Um, to our parents and our friends and family, some of whom are hopefully able to join us virtually as we are unfortunately not able to be together in person this year um, due to COVID-19. Um, we hope that you are able to uh, join us and watch and we hope that you're proud of your students. For purposes of uh, speaking more easily to folks, I'm going to temporarily remove this um, and I will put it back on when I need to be in proximity of folks here. But we're privileged to have been able to work with your students this week um, and to be able to help enjoy this experience with them. And we're hoping that you've been inspired by your students. We're hoping that you to watch the City Facebook page as we've been sharing the activities that they've been participating in throughout the week. And we are um, here today um, to introduce to you the candidates um, for fellow in the Science Institute program. So I'm gonna go through a little background information here and introduce a couple folks, and um, then we'll get to hear some information from the students about what they've been doing this week. So for those of you that don't know, I'm Paula Farnell. I'm the director here for the Sturgeon City Nonprofit, and I'm also the director for the Institute's program. I'd also like to just quickly recognize Dr. Don Herring, who is the chairman of the board of directors for Sturgeon City, the nonprofit, and also recognize Mr. Glenn Hargett, our assistant city manager, um, who helps us out um, with this program. And I just wanna take a minute uh, to recognize the fact that we're very proud to still continue this program. This is our 22nd summer of the Sturgeon City Institutes, and we could not do this without the partnerships that make this program possible, which include strong support from the city of Jacksonville and also from the Onslow County Schools in partnership with the Sturgeon City nonprofit. And so although today, this morning, we're here to recognize our fellows for the Science Institute program, we just want to briefly mention that there have been several other institutes taking place this week as well. Um, there is a New Generation Leaders Institute, which typically takes place um, this summer due to some conditions and requirements based on COVID-19. We were not able to hold that program, but students that have now completed the Science Institute program will be eligible for this program next year. We also operate the Science Academy program, and typically there is an engineering and a marine biology track available. This summer we had our marine biology group, so again, something that you guys will be eligible for um, potentially next year. We also have our Public Safety Institute, uh, which is operated in a partnership between um, the police and fire and EMS departments for the city of Jacksonville, so that's a pretty neat program as well. And we also have our Art Institute, um, where they work with members from the Council for the Arts and use the environment as inspiration for different media and different types of art projects. So these are just some things that we would like for you to keep in mind as possibilities for next year um, and keep an eye out for the dates uh, for when the institutes will take place summer 2021. I'm gonna give a little brief background about Sturgeon City. So we're all here as a result of a vision. And uh, I mentioned to the students um, that are here with us now, but those watching from home and other locations may not have heard um, a little bit about why Sturgeon City um, in our opening presentation. Um, and you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about that now. So the site that we have been having our program at this week um, and where we're now standing in the Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center is the former site of the wastewater treatment plant for the city of Jacksonville. This plant ceased operations in 1998 as the city opened the environmentally friendly land application plant, which a lovely Science Institute students got to visit this week and learn a lot more about. Um, but if it hadn't been for the city folks and a lot of our local citizens and a lot of other groups in our area really coming together um, and wanting to work together to have some ideas for this site, um, you know, and they recognized some of the things that had taken place at this site because the site was in operation for over 40 years and it did discharge the treated wastewater directly into Wilson Bay and therefore into the New River. And unfortunately, due to several factors, also other locations and issues in addition to the plant itself, um, the river had become degraded and polluted and folks chose to take a responsibility for that. Um, and they wanted to speak up and they wanted to make sure that we were able to take pride in our rivers once again. Um, there was actually a large hog waste spill in 1995 and folks expected that we might see um, some severe issues following that hog waste spill, but unfortunately those issues were not seen because the river was already so degraded that there wasn't really a strong impact. And that really served to wake up 
We needed to step up and speak up and so many different groups um, came together and chose to speak out and work together and the city leaders um, chose to provide assistance in that and chose to use the words moral obligation um, as a way of taking responsibility for the role they played in that degradation and working to improve that and bring life back to Wilson Bay and to the river and to this area. Jacksonville is a community um, and Onslow County is a community that takes a lot of pride in our rivers and waterways and people wanted to be able to be proud of our rivers and waterways again. And so they came together to really work um, to clean up the site out here. And as all those groups came together and worked together and as it was exciting to see youth come out and even get involved in those projects, the idea was born to be able to move forward with the Sturgeon City Project, which was really truly focused on the environmental education aspects and continuing to tell the story of what had happened and how people had taken responsibility for that, the cleanup efforts, and how we could continue to learn from those and repeat them and be able to add on these environmental experiences for our students in this area. And it was super exciting that in uh, just one year after the closure of this plant, not even a full year, um, in the summer of 1999, when we had the very first Sturgeon City Institutes, that a student actually found some of the first signs of life returning to Wilson Bay. And so that was a great, um, you know, a great moment that we've just been able to continue to build on now for over 20 years. And so we're very excited. Our second summer that we've actually been able to operate our Sturgeon City Institutes in our still relatively new Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center. Uh, for those of you that may or may not remember, today is actually the anniversary of the opening ceremony uh, for this building, which was able to take place during last year's Sturgeon City Institutes program. And very accomplished here with this facility, again, partnership from the city of Jacksonville. Um, this entire facility um, would not be possible without them, and it's been a dream, you know, over 20 years in the making. So we're very excited that we've been able to once again host the programs here this year. And, you know, such is our connection to the river and to our communities that everybody able to work into a reality for us. And we're just excited for all the things that we'll be able to continue to do with this facility and with this site into the future and for future generations. And so one of the big things that these institutes carry forth is the promise of stewardship. As I've mentioned, this community takes a lot of pride in our rivers and our waterways, and we want to continue on the idea of stewardship of those, but also just of stewardship of our community in general. Um, as was mentioned with the different options for the different types of institute programs that are part of this overall program, there's many different things about our community that you can get involved in. And we really want to be able to help prepare our youth to become leaders and to feel like they have a voice in our community. And as I've mentioned um, a couple times that um, we have been able to chronicle what your students have been doing um, this week. And we have made those photos available on Flickr if you're able to go on there and even just search Sturgeon City Institutes. And we have been sharing much of those onto our Sturgeon City Facebook page. So there are those available and accessible to you going into the future. We will also be recording um, today's proceedings, and so those will be continuing to play on G10 in the coming days and weeks, and will also be available on YouTube if you search Sturgeon City Institutes on YouTube, if you wish to watch this again um, in future days. And one of the ways that the Science Institute group in particular um, works on chronicling what they do during the week and what they learn during the week is by using WordPress. And so they have been creating um, blog posts on there, utilizing their photos and the data they have gathered, the information they have learned. And so you can um, find those at um, WordPress slash Sturgeon City. And um, here's just a little example of um, some of the types of things that they've been putting together. And they'll be able to show you more about that here shortly. So with that being said, um, and here's just a reminder again about where you can access some of these proceedings later on and some of these photos. I would like to um, go ahead and move on into our recognition, and I'm just going to give a couple uh, mentions here and thoughts, and then I'll introduce the important folks who've actually been working with the students this week. So our Sturgeon City Science Institute, um, one of the big things that we pass on this week to the students is that science is about observation, and it's about then interpreting that observation. Um, but so it's an important thing that we think about, and we'd like to share with you guys an observation that we've made about you. So you are now in a unique group. So you are participating in the 2020 iteration of the Sturgeon City Science Institute, and you are now going to be eligible to become a fellow of the Science Institute, 
And you have been able to work this week with some um, very talented and uh, very important folks here in our community, as well as working with each other uh, to really get, as I like to say, down and dirty uh, with science. We hope that you guys have enjoyed yourself. But just please do keep in mind that you are a selected group. You were chosen to participate in this program. So we hope that you guys are able to take pride in yourselves as well for being a part of this program this week and being able to participate. And um, one of the things that we talked to you about too is that we promised you that you would work, you know, again, like I mentioned, um, with some special folks in our community this week, uh, with some of our educators and with some of our city staff. Um, and I would like to introduce to you uh, one of those folks, and this is Miss Pat Donovan Brandenburg. She is our stormwater manager for the city of Jacksonville. I'm gonna let her come on up. I also am going to remove this. So on Monday, you weren't sure you were going to make it, uh, us teachers either, right? Um, but the students, uh, for the parents that might not have actually got to hear what your child did every day, all you know is that they came home wet, muddy, stinky, and very tired, because uh, at the end of the day, we saw a lot of heads going down on desks. On Monday, we actually went out to land up, and you're gonna see pictures of this, and we, we put them in natural habitat to look at diversity that is surrounding us all the time. Uh, Jacksonville is in Oslo County, is a Cama County, meaning that we have water all around us in all different variations. And what we wanted to do is to have our students put in on their observation skills to look at these different types of habitats to compare one to the next, but more important to appreciate. Cama counties are very, very different from all the other counties because of the different wildlife and the diversity that we have around us. And unless you actually get into that, you may be missing a few things. So the students were real quiet on Monday and we understand because of the virus that our world has changed a little bit. Having been part of the institutes for 22 years, this has probably been one of our more interesting years, having to social distance when, you know, for teachers, we automatically want to, you know, get very close to our students and have contact, positive contact and positive influence. So having to distance, having to wear masks um, was a challenge, especially for me. Um, but we overcame those and what we saw is the kids were very quiet on Monday but by Monday afternoon when we did uh, frisbee, uh, some sort of frisbee game that our people came up with, uh, I saw and I heard something that I have not heard for a very long time, for a couple months actually, and that was, that was kids laughing. I heard loud voices, I heard uh, chiding and kidding, and I heard laughter. And that's probably one of the things that we're missing out on with this whole COVID thing is we've been missing out on laughter because everything has been, you know, virtual through a computer. So that's one of the reasons why all of the directors, when we got together and said, you know, we're going to be in phase two, do we go back to phase one rules? Are we going to go to phase three? Should we even have these institutes? And my stance was always yes. Yes, 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 more now than ever. We still need to get people out. We need to get them into the environment, engage them into our, our world, the real world. Um, so it was really good when I heard them laughing at the Frisbee, was it Ultimate Frisbee game. That was such a joy to stand there and watch. So Tuesday they went to the beach, they went on Salt Marsh, the beachfront. Wednesday they had all kinds of reptiles. So I'm sure your dog and your cat really loved y'all when y'all went home on Wednesday. You smelled really different. And on Thursday, they came home even more wet because we were out on canoes and out on the boat. So get them to, to tell you what they did if they can because explaining helps them remember over time. And uh, we have had some great teachers, probably some of the best teachers with our institutes because they're always full of energy. I don't know that I could teach 20, 25, 30 years and still that the teachers have that we are blessed with. Um, so the institutes by, by no means um, work alone. It, there is a group 
that makes this happen in the beginning, every day, at the end, and then for the next year. So what I would like to do is actually introduce you, oh, thank you, <laughs> introduce you to our fearless leaders that went out into the field and helped each student come to grasp uh, the importance of each organism. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Julie Bale, she is in, uh, in charge of the Science Institute, has been for a while. She is, come on up, Julie. She is uh, at Newbridge Middle School. She ran the science lab, and she's been with us from almost day one. Uh, she ran the Earth Group, and with her, oh, with her was Colin Stoneham. Thank you. I was like, wait, these are out of order. Colin is also at Newbridge Middle School, uh, and he teaches history, correct? And then for the moon group, we have Brandon Dilliman. Brandon uh, is our high school teacher. He is actually at White Oak High School, and he is fabulous. He runs the green team at uh, White Oak. So any students that go to White Oak, you definitely want to look up Mr. Dilliman. He'll look different at the school than he did here, but he's, uh, he's a great teacher too. And with, uh, with Brandon with, is Sean Krogswood. Krogswood? Mm -hmm. I'll get it right one year, Sean. And he is also at Newbridge Middle School, and he teaches to me the hardest class you can have, and that's math. Uh, but he seems to be really good at it. So these are your moon and earth group leaders that helped uh, everybody all week long. But there's four more that are personally my, my favorite just because every day you guys showed up and before you got here you had a lot of equipment. Waders, seine nets, dip nets, jugs of water, whatever you needed, the YSI, to test throughout the day the different water quality to parameters or the apparatuses to actually capture some of the organisms. That was done by our crew, and our crew was here at early dawn, putting all of that together, and then late, cleaning it up for you to use again the next day. So we're gonna bring up, first is Aaron, our water quality tech, and then Maddie is also a water quality tech. I'm very blessed to have these two working with us. Uh, in the stormwater water quality division. Erin's been with me almost three years. Maddie started about seven months ago, but I, I hope they retire here. And then we are very fortunate to actually provide internships, paid internships during the summertime to juniors and seniors at different colleges that have degree or getting degrees in marine biology or environmental science. This year we have Ben, who is actually almost completing his master's at UNCW. I think he has two semesters left in environmental science. And okay. Cassidy, who just graduated from UNCW with environmental science, and she's getting ready to start NC State uh, with that program. So while those of you that are here, please do me the favor of giving these people a big, big round of applause. So, I think I hand this over to Julie, right? Jules, don't sit down. So thank you guys. We really enjoyed you all week. This has been, I'll take this off now. Yes, I'm Julie Bale, and I'm the director of the Science Institute. This is a great group of students. We had rain, cold rain, sunshine, mud, everything you could imagine this week in the four days that we were here and they took it all in and didn't complain and did everything they were asked to do and usually with a pretty good smile even if they fell in the water and had and do it again so we're gonna let them do their presentations we're gonna start with the moon group so moon group if you will make your way up please I'm Matthew. Uh, I'm a part of the Moon Group. I'm Nicholas. My name's Nate. I'm Hannah. I'm Sydney. And I'm Abigail. The beach has the greatest bio. Uh, bio. Oh, Jesus. Bio. Um, bio. Diversity. It also provides more flavorful 
conditions for those organisms that can tolerate longer amounts of sun and air exposure. Some of the organisms that you can find are sand fleas, pelicans, and sea turtles. <coughs> At the lily pond, one of the most noticeable things is the duckweed, which is an invasive species in North Carolina. Duckweed grows up to one-fourth of an inch large and is good for water quality. Duckweed is one of the most small, uh, smallest flowering plants and has no natural predators. Wilson Bay is a body of water that has all kinds of life. The bottom is covered in mud. We call it a baby gar and an eel there. The dissolved oxygen was 86.8%. The salinity was 0. The turbidity was 0 0.12 NTU. The pH was 6.36. The conductivity was 407.2 microsiemens, and the nitrates were below 5 and the phosphates were 0 0.5 parts per million. The carnivorous forest we went to was the loblily pine forest, which is made up of loblily pine trees. The animals that you could find in the carnivorous forest are yellow flies, raccoon, deer, mosquitoes, butterflies, birds, and snakes. Some carnivorous forests are maple trees, sweet gum trees, and oak trees. Maritime forests are very unique in many ways. One of the ways they are different from other forests is that they have shorter trees with deeper and wider roots. They have to have deeper roots because they grow in sand and the water is not stored close to the surface. The trees also have deep and wide roots for protection from the many storms that impact the coast. The maritime forest is a very harsh and challenging environment for plants to survive in due to the lack of water that remains on the surface. Despite the many challenges that the organisms face living in the maritime forest, they still manage to survive. The salt marsh of the intercoastal waterway is a very unique and influential habitat. The weeds of the marsh help to capture surplus sediments and floodwaters that pose a threat to other habitats and lives. One of the distinct features of these marshes are the tiny fiddler crabs roaming and scurrying across the shore. While female fiddler crabs are generally the same size as the males, they have two very small pincers as opposed to the males having one small and one large. This large claw has the ability to grow up to twice the size of his entire body, which is typically an inch long. These small creatures are beneficial to the environment and ecosystem of the waterway through their burrows. The digging of these many, many small holes helps to keep the marshes clean and healthy so they're able to continue growing strongly. The long and hollow burrows also help to aerate the sediments beneath the sandy surface. Hello, we are the Earth Group for the Sturgeon City Science Institute. My name is Kai. My name is Aiden. My name is Alex. I'm Asher. My name is Maddie. My name is Cheyenne. Seeing a variety of animal life in and outside of natural habitats around Onslow County was one of the highlights of our Sturgeon City adventures. These pelicans were seen by both the Earth and Moon groups at Onslow Beach upon our arrival. We hypothesized the water ecosystem. While sieving through the sand at Onslow Beach, Alex happened upon this remarkable sand flea. It was then released back into its saltwater environment. On Wednesday, we observed a variety of reptiles brought to us by a local animal rescue, rescue, rescue organization named Eastern Exotics. One of the creatures that we observed was an American crocodile. This four-year-old crocodile's jaws have been taped shut temporarily so that we were able to examine it. The crocodile's snout is shaped like a V, while the alligator's mouth is U-shaped. The crocodile also has its teeth showing when its mouth is closed, while the alligator doesn't. Junior, the blue and gold macaw, has a powerful beak that allows it to defend itself 
and consume food. The shop claws are perfect for latching onto branches. Eric Dion, the owner of Eastern Exotics, informed our group that Junior knew over 100 words. These frogs live in the maritime forest between Onslow Beach and the intercoastal waterway. To survive in this harsh environment, they utilize camouflage to hide from predators. An osprey has decided to nest on this post. These birds are very fast and use their sharp talons to catch their prey. Wilson Bay is a good environment for this bird with the abundance of fish and the safety of the, its secluded nest. This American eel which was caught in Wilson Bay is an indicator that the water quality is in the bay is good. This would allow for fish populations to grow and thrive near Sturgeon City while creating a healthier environment. Uh, we are now going to give uh, certificates for all the members of the Science Institute for this uh, year. We've got Kai Hercula from the Earth Group. We've got Aiden Chestnut. Alex Gutierrez. Asher Williford. Maddie Helt and Cheyenne Clark. And from the Moon Group, we have Abigail Huller, Matthew Nagy, Nathan Nunnally, Sydney Sammons, Nicholas Snedecker and Hannah Whitfield. And a big round of applause for our Earth and Moon group. So thank you guys. Um, again, so we had our moon group um, and our earth group that just gave you guys some great presentations um, about the information that they discovered during this week. And we just want to briefly talk with you guys um, about some of the places that we've come from. So uh, it was actually uh, this time of year, as we talk about a vision for the future, this time of the year, uh, not too many years ago, um, that one of the very first uh, to the city of Jacksonville by the Sturgeon City nonprofit, uh, solidifying the partnership uh, between the Sturgeon City nonprofit uh, and the city of Jacksonville as part of the vision for this education center that we are now sitting in today. And they made this lovely shape of a sturgeon with the Sturgeon City Institute students uh, during the summer for that check presentation. But it that we're really talking about um, a strong vision for the future and helping to educate students in a better and safer environment and create those community stewards. And, um, you know, some might still be wondering why we have... I briefly mentioned it in some of our background as well. Um, but one of the big things to keep in mind with that is that um, sturgeon are bottom feeders. They're also what's known as a keystone species. And because of those factors, um, they're very sensitive to water about with the eel being a good indicator of quality species that would be similar. And we used to have two sturgeon area at one time, the short-nosed sturgeon and the Atlantic sturgeon. Uh, the short-nosed are actually federally endangered and the Atlantic are still protected at the state level. And we had always thought it would be kind of the great ultimate feather in our cap if we really saw a strong sturgeon. What a great job we would have done improving the water quality. 
Um, you know, we also had conversations in the beginning of the formation of Sturgeon City that perhaps we would actually raise uh, sturgeon and be able to release them into the river. But because of their high sensitivity to water quality and some of the um, aspects in terms of their protected status, it was actually more difficult than we had hoped. Um, but we are still working towards the water quality aspect of that effort. Sturgeon, of course, are also sort of known as a prehistoric fish. Um, they've looked very much the same for millions of years, and they can grow to several feet long, so they are very recognizable if you are able to ever observe them um, you know, out in the wild or maybe see some freshwater species. Some of our area aquariums have some freshwater species of sturgeon on display as well. Um, but again, just one more way that we can tie into our story of protecting and improving water quality. And we really also like to highlight the fact that there are several different species of sturgeon. And I mentioned those two saltwater species that are common here, but there are several different other saltwater and freshwater species of sturgeon. Kind of the same way that um, we have several different kinds of people in our community and in our area and around the world. And so one other cool way that we can kind of tie in the pieces of creating stewards and creating a strong community. And one of the other things um, that formed out of this drive here in our city and our community to really help give youth a voice and create youth leaders um, was actually our Jacksonville Youth Council. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to have a, a member join us this morning as we've been able to do in some past years, but I did want to just briefly mention this as an opportunity for all area high school students. Again, um, Jacksonville takes a lot of pride in being able to give a voice to the youth. So if you have interest in community affairs or leadership opportunities or many different projects and activities that they get involved in, that's definitely something you should check out. Um, they meet at our great Jacksonville Youth Center. Obviously, right now they're meeting virtually, um, but you know, hopefully uh, we could certainly share some information with you about this if anyone's interested. You can reach out to me and I can provide you contact information. They also have a Facebook page, so you can look them up there and get some information about um, what they've been up to and um, what they're doing right now if you think you might be interested in that program. Um, and really, again, it's a great opportunity also to be able to get involved uh, potentially with some of our local government and local officials if you have interest in any of those types of opportunities. A great chance to interact um, with the folks uh, in our community. And so we've been talking a few times today about this word fellow, right? You guys have probably heard this word throughout this week as well. And um, I'm just going to give you here um, a brief definition of that word that we like to use. And we like to say that a fellow is a member of a learned society. And so that's why we apply that title to you guys as members of our Science Institute program of this year. And we hope that um, now that you've come to the end of your journey and your quest for knowledge, um, you know, you've completed these tasks and we hope that you feel more knowledgeable and that's why we would like to be able to give you this title of fellow because you're now gonna become part of a special group, part of your own kind of learned society. And so um, we are actually going to take this moment to be able to have you guys um, deliver your oath um, to officially become fellows of the Science Institute program. Okay, gang, do me a favor. Everybody stand up. This is always a great moment for me. So I'm going to say the oath line by line, and you guys repeat after me. So the first line, though, let me go ahead and tell you. I'm going to say, I state your name. Don't say state your name, actually give me your name, okay? We all good with that? Ready? Also raise your right hand so that you really, 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 really mean it. Or is it left hand? Right hand? Okay, just check it. <laughs> all right, I state your name. I, Pat Donovan Brandenburg, accept the challenge of the Sturgeon City Science Institute to help others Others. Appreciate, our environment. Appreciate our environment. To help others, to help others. Share, my knowledge share my knowledge about our habitat. About our habitat. To inspire, I'm sorry, to inspire others. To, inspire others. to care for living things, care for living things. Around, us. around us. And to continue my knowledge. To continue my knowledge. This I do as a fellow of the Sturgeon City Science Institute.
Well, thank you guys. And I would just like to take this moment to um, say congratulations um, to all of you for becoming fellows of our 2020 class of the Sturgeon City Science Institute. And um, you know, a lot of the successes of each of these classes of the institutes are really not measured during this week, but they're gonna be measured in the endeavors that you guys continue on into your future. We hope that maybe you'll be able to join us in future summers and other Sturgeon City Institute programs. But even if not, we hope that we, you will continue to be involved and active in the community as stewards and on your path to become community leaders. And we hope that you will continue to utilize the information, and the knowledge, and the skills that you have learned with us this week. And even some of the concepts in terms of how to work together. Um, also, some of the extra concepts you learned this particular week in terms of our extra protocols for COVID-19. So thank you all for your patience and your extra efforts um, to help keep us all healthy and safe during this week and participate with us. And so, again, just a reminder that this week we are celebrating the 22nd summer of the Sturgeon City Institutes. And the Science Institute is our oldest um, continually running institute program. So again, consider yourselves lucky to be able to participate in this program and um, you know, give yourselves a good little pat on the back for the things that you have accomplished this week um, and what you've, uh, what you've put up with, <laughs> what you've let us teach um, you, what you've let these instructors teach you. And we hope that it will continue to have meaning for you as you go on into your future endeavors. Um, and therefore, with all the participants acknowledged and with a review of the institutes and documentation made available, I will therefore declare the 2020 Sturgeon City Science Institute adjourned.